Hey, morning everybody. We are out here in the garage again. Today we're working on part two of our Napa Flate build. If you remember Napa Flate, if you watched uh, part one of the video, this is now part two. Part one, we put a pressure switch in here and switched out our hose to a standard coupler and a closed system uh, to improve this compressor. Kind of the, the basics of what most anybody would want to do if you get this compressor, kind of a little upgrade you can do. So if you want to learn how to do that, go back, check out part one of this. Part two, I told you we were going to do some uh, kind of extensive, I don't know if it's extensive, but a little bit of uh, re-engineering on this. I don't like this circuit board. Uh, circuit board, uh, unknown circuit board of uh, Chinese origin, just kind of uh, scares me a little bit in a compressor at this price point and something you might have to rely on in the middle of nowhere to get some air back in a tire. Uh, bothers me a little bit. So... Today, we're going to completely re-engineer uh, the uh, electrical system on this. Uh, the the uh, key part of that, right here, I've got a 200 amp continuous duty relay. Uh, we're going to replace this circuit board with this 200 amp relay. Also, if you remember one of my complaints from this compressor is the uh, leads. They, they seem just egregiously undersized to me. This is a 90 amp compressor running off of, uh, they claim they're eight gauge, but uh, I don't believe that that's eight gauge wire. Um, so to me, that's just egregiously undersized for a 90 amp motor that's gonna be running for a little bit of time as you're uh, inflating tires. So because all that comes in here and is attached to the circuit board with solder, it's another reason I kind of wanted to get rid of that circuit board is so that I could easily uh, put some uh, better wire on here. So the other thing we're going to do today is I've got some six gauge jumper cable. This was a scrounged up set actually. Didn't pay anything for this, but it's a six gauge set of uh, jumper cables that we're cutting up and modifying. Step one, I already put a set of Anderson connectors on it. Uh, if you've never seen Anderson connectors, they're kind of a universal system of uh, plug and play. You can plug them together like that. And now I've got the ends back on it, but uh, easy to separate. And these are rated for 175 amps. So plenty of juice to carry through these. Um, I'm going to put a matching set. So we'll have an end like this that's hardwired on the Jeep. I already have it on there for a 50 amp connector uh, for my, my Vire connect, uh, compressor. But I'm uh, going to have to upgrade to these 175s on there. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to put one of these ends on the Jeep so that all you have to do when you want to inflate your tires, get out your compressor, and you just simply plug this in to the connector on the front of the Jeep. Don't have to pop your hood. Don't have to worry about hooking up alligator connectors. It's already connected. You simply plug it in, flip it on and go. But I uh, already started on that wiring part of it uh, this morning before I uh, brought you guys in. And then the other end here, we just got... Uh, bare wires we're going to put that in here the other thing we're going to do just because of the layout in here the switch that's in there is not going to work in the position that it's in it's going to kind of be in the way so we're going to have to redo the switch too so i've got a just little on off switch here uh, that i can drill and just pop into the plastic wherever i find a convenient spot by the time we get everything else mounted in here but uh, that's what we're going to do uh, cut this circuit board out get rid of it completely here's our leads to our motor right here we're going to connect the hot lead directly hot to our, our new power cable. That's our cut up set of jumper cables. Connect the hots uh, together just like they are in here now. We're going to switch the ground side. So this uh, new 200 amp relay is going to fit in and switch the ground side. We're going to use this new switch in conjunction with our pressure switch. So we'll still have thermal protection coming from the compressor itself on this wire. We'll have our pressure switch in here, and we'll have an on-off switch, any of which can be bypassed easily by pulling the side cover off, and you can uh, bypass any of that. You can also bypass this in the field if this goes bad, simply by you'll, you'll, you'll have on your, you'll have, uh, your ground to both sides of this. You can simply take one of these off, move it over to the other side, and you'll have hot-wired this to be hot all the time. Don't recommend that. In an emergency situation, you got to remember you've bypassed your pressure switch, you bypassed your on-off switch, and you still have a closed connection. So you got to be real careful with this, but it's a simple way to hotwire this if you're in a situation 
where any of this componentry goes bad and you need your compressor. So that's what we're going to do today. I'll bring you guys along and we'll see what happens. All right. Before I, brought, uh, before I got too far along, I wanted to bring you guys in for the point of no return here. Obviously, got the front cover off, got the back cover off and loose. Uh, I've actually disconnected our switch just for now. It's just a plug on the bottom of the circuit board. But uh, I wanted to bring you in for the uh, point of no return. Uh, I think we are officially voiding all warranties at this point. Um, but here we are. Rather than try to unsolder these connections, I'm just going to snip them off and... Uh, this is kind of a terrifying part of this. See if I can get my dikes in there at an angle that will actually cut that wire. But here we go. Warranty voided. Snip this side off. All right. Warranty is officially voided. <laughs> Hopefully this all works. But uh, just going to start disassembling here and pulling the rest of it apart. All right, one other thing I have done, uh, all the uh, protrusions in here that uh, held the uh, the circuit board in place and our screws that went through the middle here, just took a pair of dikes and cut all those out so we've got a nice clean center section to work with. Uh, next step, I'm going to put this back side on with the hose. I'm going to put it back on and start tucking parts in there and see what happens. All right. Bring you guys back in. I've been kind of fiddling around here for a few minutes, uh, trying to figure out the uh, best way to get this to work. But I think what I've decided, unfortunately, none of the holes that were already in the backside here line up for anything that's going to work for me. So we're just going to have to drill some new holes to run wire in. And you see I've got my uh, uh, relay sitting right here. I think that's about the best place for it to live is about right there. And uh, what we're going to do is drill the backside right back here. Kind of back in this area. I'm going to bring our wires in there, our uh, new lead wires in there, and then on the front here, I think I'm going to poke a hole right here for my switch right here. I got plenty of room right here in the front. Uh, as I was messing around here, I yanked out one of my uh, one of my connectors, power connectors here, so I'm going to have to redo that one too. But that's no big deal. I got I got a little carried away pulling on. Uh, these heavy wires didn't realize I had a hold of uh, that one and yanked it out at the same time. So it happens. Gonna have to redo that one, but I think that'll make everything happy. Um, and then had to run to uh, had to run to the hardware store too. Uh, gonna mount my relay right there with some double sided tape. Um, it does have a little mounting tab on it, but I really don't think that's necessary. I don't think it's gonna help much, and I'd rather have a little bit of that tape will also provide a little bit of a uh, vibration damping uh, for that relay since it's sitting right on the case there. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So the next step is to uh, just start uh, just start doing it. I should also show you one other concession I made. I did uh, uh, go down and grab some right angle connectors uh, since I have to, since this one pulled apart on me, I uh, had to redo that one anyway. So I decided to just break down and grab some right angle connectors. That'll make a much better connection on there. I would recommend doing that if you're doing that pressure switch is to just grab some right angle guys and uh, put those in there. Wire goes in from the side like that and it pushes up on there. Just make everything fit together a little better. Um, but I'm going to do that as well since I screwed up on that.
All right, probably stop for a second and explain what uh, this little wire is here I just made, this little jumper wire. So for this whole system to work, I still need a ground for my switch. Or not for my switch, excuse me. I still need a ground circuit for my switch circuit uh, to make my relay work. I need a, I have a hot side of my relay and a, and a ground side of my relay to make this entire uh, switch system work. Come hot from off the thermal on the motor, come up here, hot to our pressure switch, hot comes off there to our switch, on off switch, hot comes off there, over to the positive side of our relay, but I need a ground from the ground side of my relay uh, to, to ground that circuit. So what this little jumper is, is it just comes off the ground, this plugs onto the ground prong on the relay, and then this is gonna come up to the terminal that has my ground to my battery on it. So this will meet here and this will ground my relay. So that's what this little one, uh, little jumper is for. And I just made that out of a black wire, obviously, because it's a ground. So it'll just go in here. You do need to make sure that it is on the battery side of your relay, not the motor side. If you put it on the motor side, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna ground got to be grounded to the battery side. So that'll go in there as well. But just thought I'd stop and tell you what that one is. And I did a little bit of wiring here. Also uh, built a, a wire that's going to go from our relay to our switch, from our switch to our pressure switch, from our pressure switch down to our thermal lead. So that's what all these uh, red wires are. It's just our, our power circuit, if you will, since we have a couple of different switches in line. And then our ground circuit will be simply <laughs> that little guy that jumps from the ground terminal, uh, the activating the ground terminal to activate the relay up to the ground terminal of the relay so that we have a ground. All right, everybody, I'm uh, big uh, being uh, truthful when I screw up. So I got to stripping off these uh, these uh, four gauge jumper cables and uh, it's all insulation. I don't even see the end of that. There's uh, more insulation, there's wire in this. So these uh, four gauge Chinese cheap uh, jumper cables that I scrounged out of a garage sale or garage, I don't know where I got them, got them for free. Scrounged them from somewhere, that's what I get. But uh, you can see this is the, the cable that came off of it. It's actually the same size as this jumper cable. So kind of went through making these for nothing. Uh, no reason to, to use these cables, uh, big, thick, kind of heavy, stiff cables when they're all insulation. It, it, it doesn't help. So I'm going to go back to this, uh, this cable here that's a uh, little bit... Uh, easier to work with, but a lot more copper. Well, I should say more copper. Same amount of copper in this and this. This is easier to work with. So I'm gonna go back to using this. Uh, this is the cable that came off of it, so kind of screwed that up, but uh, in the end, I think uh, getting rid of that circuit board is gonna be better for this compressor anyway. So we're gonna go this route, keep going here and uh, building this, but kind of disappointed, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of upset at myself. Uh, not gonna, not gonna call it quits on this bigger cable. I'm just going to uh, reevaluate the uh, situation, see if I can come up with another uh, legitimate set of uh, cable that's bigger around, um, and uh, probably just quit being cheap and buy a good set of jumper cables to use or some cable, uh, some actual real four gauge cable. So anyway, we're at the point of uh, getting this connected, so that's uh, that's where we're at now. We're gonna keep moving along. All right, we'll bring you guys back in for a minute. Got to be straight up honest with you, not having a good day. Uh, knocked over my tripod here, fell right on my lav mic attachment, so busted my lav mic. My uh, big crimper set of tools here as it was sitting here on the bench. Uh, the snap ring on this side popped off, spring, everything is gone. So my big tools falling apart, giving me some grief. 
just not having a good day at the moment. But we are going to keep you going. I just kind of skipped forward on a couple steps because I was a little upset and didn't want to uh, be there on camera, mad as I was. But we're making some progress. So you can see right here, I got my hot to the motor, hot from our battery cable, crimped together, shrink tube, nice connection there. Right here, got my ground from my battery, excuse me, ground from my motor up here and attached to this side of my solenoid. Now I'm going to flip everything around and do the other side. I am going to put these screws back together on this back side, at least get them set in place so that I know what room I have to work with here. Good news was I was able to run my cabling through the uh, the hole where the switch was. Uh, so that's one less hole I got to drill, had to drill, uh, get this put back together. Okay, here we are back together. I am going to uh, have my head loose, my head's loose on here just so that I could uh, get things mounted in place in there. But I am going to, uh, maybe I'm going to start a screw here. Just going to put a couple screws back in place here. Just so everything's locked in. Now we can do the rest of it. So we've got the uh, other side of our connection here. We need to pull this up. We need to put an end on it get it attached right here then we'll be down to uh, connecting our our switch circuit and getting it wired up but we're kind of in the home stretches here getting over my upsetness at the moment and uh, gonna get this finished Okay, bring you guys back in here. This is my ground going to my battery. So we've got our jumper here that uh, grounds our relay. I'm gonna hook it up. Before I do that, I'm gonna hook up this one. This one's gonna go on the other side. So this is my, uh, to my switch. Okay, so these are my leads to my switch. There we go. Just wanted to route it around here to live where my switch is gonna live right here. This is my ground for the uh, activator circuit, switch circuit. Okay, get it pushed on the relay there. So now we've got, just to give you another rundown of what we got. This bottom wire here, this is the one that comes up from our motor. That's where our that's where our thermal switch is. Comes up to our pressure switch here. Comes out of our pressure switch to this one. I'm gonna go to our rocker switch here. Other side of our rocker switch here goes over to our relay. That's gonna activate our relay. Ground for that comes around, hits our ground here. Our hot lead from our battery comes in back here you can see the red connection right here drops down is the hot lead going down to our motor and it comes back up and out over here on the back side of our relay is the ground side of our motor and to the other side of our relay goes out to our battery so the way this is wired up now this uh this should work i'm going to take a minute i've still got to uh Punch a hole right here for this switch to live right about there. So I'm going to punch that out with a bit and uh, get this all put back together. We'll go for a trial run on the uh, Jeep, see if it works. All right, 
Lighting's actually terrible out here today, but uh, last little bit here, I wanted to pop my switch into place. Now, didn't drill, I got to drill my hole out one size bigger. So I still got to go pull that switch apart, uh, pop that hole out one size bigger. But I did want to show you, flip it on, works. Works. So all that, we were able to, leaky connector, shut that off so it doesn't do that. But all that, we were able to uh, simplify that uh, electrical system in there, make it so it's very easy to hotwire if you ever need to. Any of those components go bad, you can actually one uh, do it with a multi-tool, actually. Just undo one of those uh, connectors, connect the other side up, connect it back together, and you've hotwired your compressor. No, uh, no circuit boards to go bad, none of that kind of stuff. Dead simple inside there, works, and have everything we want except for the upgraded cables so that's going to be a part two we are or a part three maybe we are going to upgrade those the uh leads on here still not happy with the size of that but i had to run with what i had today so it's back together it's working uh i'm going to show i'm going to get uh anderson connectors hooked up here 175 ampers on the front so that i can just don't have to open the hood i can just go back to plugging in on the front of the jeep but i did want to show you it's together and it's working so mission accomplished Hope you enjoyed part two of that, and we'll uh, catch you on the next one. All right, everybody. As you knew, as you can tell from that video, I was not happy with the wiring situation that we ended up with on that compressor. So I did a little thing. Since I finished filming that, uh, I uh, made some new wires. So I went to uh, online to a welding supply place. I got uh, six gauge, made in the U.S., high quality, all copper. Uh, cables that was about a dollar fifty a foot for the red and the black. I got six feet of each cost me about 25 bucks or so to get it shipped uh, To my house, but this is high quality made in the US guaranteed to be six gauge cable uh, high quality stuff uh, Inside the compressor I noticed uh, when I had it apart the one time it had labeled on there seven gauge so seven gauge equates to uh, one of the standard metric sizes that they use overseas um, but seemed pretty uh, pretty close when I had it apart to this actual real six gauge wire. So I think this six gauge is perfect for what we're doing. But uh, but uh, took the ends off of the uh, jumper cables that I had, uh, made those up on the end of the uh, of the welding cable, put my Anderson connector back on, shrink tubed it there. And then the one thing that was bothering me the most about using welding cable was the fact that it's not stranded. It's two separate pieces. Well. I happen to have some wire loom in one of my drawers. It's half inch wire loom. I was able to stretch it out big enough that it fit over both those pieces of six gauge wire. So now you can see my wire here is all nice and loomed together in that shrink tube on both ends, it's shrink tube where it goes into the back of the motor here. And all I did was hook that up just the same way it was hooked up before. Um, but I was able to, uh, to get that, that wiring situation much better. I, I can't even tell you how much happier I am with this solution. So I do recommend this if you're doing it. Get yourself some, some six gauge welding cable. It's about the right size. Some 175 amp Anderson cables because the, uh, the 50 amp are just too small. Uh, so you gotta run the bigger ones. But uh, this works. It's back to working condition. Uh, I can't tell you how much better I feel about the wiring now than when I started uh, and not having to use that undersized crap that was on there that just it bothers me i don't even think it's bigger than 10 gauge just really irritates me so anyway everything's back uh working works just like it should again but i wanted to give you that little update of what i did to uh to finally uh cap off this uh part two of this uh compressor build